All right. Yay. Yay. Here we are. <laughs> as, as my Scorpio friend likes to say, here we are. <laughs> About anything. <laughs> um, we are in the February calls 2022 of the GSEM program. And what we have been working on since December is activating the uh, physical doors to receive more and more these particles. They're like particles coming at us from deep in the cosmos, from up, up from the earth that are, are a, um, they're like a, a food for the energy bodies and the memories and reactivations of like activations of our next quantum leap in, uh, in evolution. Uh, in a nutshell, really, it comes down to, you know, like, it's kind of like we, we could say we could put re in front of it because it's about kind of regaining what we lost. It's about re-becoming 5D based beings that function from a crystalline base and not a carbon based. And to anyone that's uh, anyone that's ever had fun studying the deep history of life on Earth and through the universe, um, our 3D state is not normal. It's it was brought on by a fall from grace, you know, that's been mythologized as you know, the fall from Eden and stuff like that and eating the apple and the good and the bad and blah, blah, blah. But certain things transpired through our history here on earth, not all because of us as a humanoid race that got overly identified with form. That's a part of it. But there was also other influences that kind of messed around to bring down, bring down the frequency. So you bring down our 5D frequency into 3D and we become much more physical beings. Much more physical equals much less energetic and intuitive and able to function from a subtle energy uh, system, which also means uh, 3D wise that we're kind of like trapped in matter. You know, like we, we get trapped and the third dimension is about uh, the mental field and the lower mental field differentiation being higher mental is intuitive in 5d the lower mental field functions through duality and things like causes and effect and here and there and then and now and and later and so we're it kind of like it traps us on a linear perception of reality a linear in a linear intellectual perception of reality, which makes it very hard for us to, first of all, travel through time and space, to uh, connect to other life forms that are not human or not even embodied or incarnated. Um, and also that makes it a lot harder for us to, to really connect to the light that we are, that's like literally pulsating within the core of every single one of our cells and within every single chakra and, and within the entire field of, of light and energy that we are, which are called the photoluminescent cells. So our whole goal in this like Dece December, January, February, March, like next month I'll be kind of closing that off and then we'll work with uh, kind of like a fine tuning our chakras in April and, and, and so on. But this four month block for me is about introducing you to the physical gateways, the physical doors. One second. I'm... Oh boy. Okay, I have a meowing cat and he's not being clear on what he wants. So we'll have a meowing cat with us. Uh, reminding you that these physical doors through which we absorb these particles coming at us, there are the eyes, the nostrils, the ears, the mouth, the belly button, and the skin. These are the physical doors. What, what I haven't 
mentioned yet is that there's also energetic doors, which are the chakras, you know, like, so the seven basic ones that we're used to knowing about and six other ones. So that's what we'll have fun exploring next month, the energetic, the 13 energetic doors. But I will talk about one today, one of them, because it's important for the work we're going to do tonight. Also, in terms of the particles, I have already introduced some of them. I've introduced to you the solar particles, which uh, also have the, uh, okay, now you want to go outside. <laughs> Sorry, hyper energy in the house. Uh, I introduced you to some of these particles already, the solar particles, which also uh, work with uh, like deeper gamma, gamma ray, deeper universe. It's not just the sun, you know, but the, these particles merge with the solar ones, which are the ones we receive the, like the most clearly we can kind of feel it. So the solar particles, the pranic particles. So these are, there's some coming from the universe, but they're also part of us. We all generate them. Every single life form generates them. Our breath generates them. Uh, they're in our food, they're in everything. Like So the pranic ones that the yogis have been working with forever. And then last month, we looked at the crystalline particles, the celestial and the terrestrial crystalline particles. So these super important uh, for a big part of the work happening here right now, remembering that the celestial ones are what is causing this huge plexus purge going on right now, where the more they come into you, the more you can't even hold for a couple of seconds, whatever crap you've been carrying, traumas, fears, beliefs, karmic stuff, whatever needs to go, whatever is stuck in your plexus is screaming louder than ever to be released. As soon as you start having these kind of thoughts that generate some of that, it's like, bah! it's like, it just wants to scream at you. And it, it can feel like it's like, ah, why is this happening? But it's like, it's happening. So you see it, it's happening. So you kind of like, look, you know, look at what I'm carrying and holding. And do I really want to be carrying and holding this? Because this is affecting all of your body. It's affecting your immune system. It's affecting your mind. It's affecting your ability to connect to your soul. So the celestial ones, create that plexus purging effect. And the terrestrial ones are heritage from the, Atlant the Atlantis civilization. And that one's really about like activating and waking up our third eye more and more and like all the glandular system that's involved with it. So tonight, I'm only going to talk about one more particle. And next month, we'll talk about the last two ones. And I'll just give me a chance to unfold why. But just so you know, tonight, we're going to talk about the adamantin particles, a word that's much easier for me to say in French, adamantin, adamantin particles, A-D-A-M-A-N-T-I-N-E. And these particles are the heritage that the Lemurians left us. They come from deep, 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 like they are literally the, they're like the primary divine undulation of all life. Uh, when the earth was first formed, that these adamantin particles are what uh, infuse into the heart of the earth. And when every single one of us is, um, uh, conceived, that's what infuses into the human heart. So I don't know if you remember a little bit, I was talking earlier about in the first call we did like this, where we at the cellular level, you know, there's a physical cell and there's the spirit and the soul energy that come in and, and together that, that forms the life that we are, that forms this, the, the trinity of which we are an example, which is a trinity that, you know, it's like the holy trinity, it exists way beyond us. 
So that's a really cool particle we're going to work with tonight. And the, the, what it affects directly is the heart chakra and the thymus gland. So most of us, we've been working together for a while. So none of you are going to be in a position where you have a completely atrophied, you know, like completely degenerated uh, thymus gland, which is the case for a lot of people, okay? Like not a lot of people have a fully functional thymus gland. It has been reduced to only generating lymphocytes and stuff for the, the, the immune system, but it is way more than that. It's just for most people, it's kind of atrophied. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that, of why that is. So tonight we're talking about we're talking and we'll be connecting to the adamantin particles, which are a very deep heritage that we received from the Lemurian civilization, which was a very heart-based civilization. It's like at the Atlanteans were more head-based, as in like high intellect with intuition and like very spirit kind of understanding. And the Lemurians were a very, very heart-based form of intuition. They were complete, they were so connected to everything and they were, they were only 5D. They never experienced falling to the 3D level. Like part of Atlantis did. Like the, the, the big, big fall that we're still trying to like get out of happened in Atlantis. The Lemurians, it was like a, something else happened, but they never stopped being 5D. So they're still very, very much alive. Um, they mostly live within the intra-Earth, intra-Terra, it's called, as a consciousness field, which is easy to access and speak with if your consciousness is functioning from 5D. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so anyway, they're very much alive and they don't come from here. They've been evolving for millions of years and they come from way deeper in the cosmos and little parentheses, just um, our earth, that's called Terra, uh, the being Gaia, that's at the heart of our earth. Her sister is Lemuria, not as in that population, but as in a planet on in another uh, like galaxy system they're kind of their sisters. So Gaia and Lemuria are sisters and whatever. It's just, it's just parentheses, but I just think that's really cool that, you know, beings evolving as planets have siblings. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> okay. So before we get into like a nice process to play around with these adamantin particles and work with opening up the heart chakra because the heart chakra is the key to feeling these particles. The expansion of the heart chakra and your ability to truly feel real love, not, not like human possessive, not, not that, like not conditional love, real love. The ability to love anything in any form in any shape. You know, that's the condition for these adamantin particles to come in. And when they really do come in, you are able to then emit them from your own heart consciously. So it's super interesting because it's kind of like the pranic stuff in the sense that the more you the more you breathe in prana consciously, the more you exhale it and bring and, and amplify it. So it's the same idea. So people that are completely asleep, they're not, they're not really generating and, and heightening the effect of adamantin particles because they're not really connected to them. But we're, we're already like, most of us have a pretty open heart chakra. We've been, at, we've been at this for a while. So for us to connect with those will be, actually most of us are already somewhat connected to them, but to connect to them consciously and increase their frequency, which, will increase the ability of the frequency of love, of the vibration of love to be felt more and more throughout the fiber of humanity. And that is the condition to raise in frequency because 5D living is heart-based living. 
it is from the frequency of the heart, which is kind of the house of the soul. So, so in our meditation, we're going to have fun working with the heart and the thymus and just doing a bunch of yummy stuff with that. The thymus as a gland for most people is no bigger than the size of a golf ball. And I'm almost exaggerating. Like that's, it's kind of like a little, a little knot of fibers. Okay. But the nat, the natural shape of the thymus gland is much more, much, much more like a, a flower. It's, it's, or a sun, you know, like it, it's supposed to be much bigger and it's, and it's, uh, full range than what it is right now. And one of the reasons that it atrophied is because our thymus gland is in charge of our growth. Okay. And we have a belief system in our 3D world that we stop growing once we're done puberty. And <laughs> lo and behold, you know, our cells are literally, you know, whatever we're believing is basically what what they 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 function with for most people it starts degenerating after that and all that's left of it for older people that that aren't trying to grow anymore is that basic function of generating lymphocytes and and somewhat offering you an immune system that kind of works but your thymus gland does a lot more than that when it's fully functioning like not only does it like regenerate cells but this is the gland that is responsible for regenerating limbs or organs. Things that we have forgotten a long time ago. Lizards still know how to do it. You know, when the lizard loses its leg, it can regrow a leg. Lizard gets its tail chopped, chopped off by something, it can regrow its tail. You know, it doesn't have a belief system saying, no, that's not possible. You know, so for a lot of people, the thymus starts waking up as soon as there's that deep calling in you that you're not done growing, <laughs> you know, when, when the soul kind of calls you or when you're like, I want, I want to work on my psyche. I want to work on what I believe that that's the impulse to grow. You know, I want to expand my energy field. That's the impulse to grow. I want to expand my consciousness and my awareness of my soul. All of this, this is impulse to grow. And that's what reactivates it. That's what like, it's like command to your thymus, like, okay, let's go, let's grow, you know? So, so this is a super interesting time we live in because like the, other than a pretty incredible function of helping you to regrow, regenerate organs and limbs <laughs> that you've lost is pretty amazing. But this is also the gland that's in charge of literally Restru the restructuration of our entire cellular system of how our cells function and how they communicate together and how much energy they can take. And it's the master gland. So this gland then starts affecting all the other glands and communicating to all of them. Okay. It's time to time to grow into the next frequency level of intelligent organization, which also means that this is the gland once it's restored and is emitting its field, it's like a frequency field that it emits, it starts being able to communicate with all of the other cells and traverses their boundary, their like the, the cellular boundary and gives and is the process through which the in universal intelligence becomes able to communicate directly with the cellular intelligence. And this is what we want. We don't want this interfering with the functioning of our cellular system because that's what's going on right now. Our beliefs have a huge impact on what our cells can do. If you're like, oh, no, that's not possible. Your cells are like, all right. All right. We like to act like that's not true because then that, that means we have way too much responsibility, not only in the world we create, but in the state of our bodies and our minds. But <laughs> it doesn't mean it's not true. <laughs> Even if we're like, yeah. 
Okay, so I, I can't wait to do this. I'm super excited. I want to come back for a little parenthesis on the uh, crystalline cells. That whole thing we were doing last last month with the the plexus purge specifically, so the celestial one specifically. It is by far the most important work that we can do to bring about a new earth and elevate our frequency than to consciously participate to this plexus purge. <laughs> purge. <laughs> no, pl please don't purge. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> please don't go shopping for more negative emotions. You know, purging the plexus which is the, the chakra through which you can, um, it's like a sensitive, it's sensitive, right? Like it, it feels energies coming into it. It feels the frequencies of others. It feels people's emotions. Like that's, why, that's where all this stuff's happening. But if ours is like all full of unprocessed and undigested emotions and beliefs and traumas and, and ways of seeing and ways of being, it's not very well able to receive clear information from the outer environment. You know, like if I carry in my plexus that all men are dirt bags that just want to whatever, get in your pants. I'm walking around with that. That's there. And like anything coming at me, it's like, it's just confirming that it's like, it gets filtered by that. So we're not even able to receive information. That's purely what's going on. So that, that purging of the plexus and of all these old emotions and really letting these, these particles come and do that work with you of heightening and bringing to your awareness what you're still carrying and holding so that you can lovingly release it, lovingly heal it and release it is the most important work on earth right now. Okay, like it is. There's no doubt about it. And we have a perfect context for that, <laughs> you know, because it's like, there is so much stuff going on and so much of everyone's emotions about this and that and control and rah, 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 that it's pretty easy for you to feel a whole bunch of stuff in your plexus. The other reason that the plexus purge is so important is that it is the necessary condition in order for you to be able to activate the clair sentient chakra so it's like it's like think about your plexus as your sensitive chakra it allows you to sense emotions and your clair sensitive or clair sentient chakra is a super important energetic chakra it's not in the body it's actually in the it's in the emotional body it's between the heart and the plexus so it's about here and it's about, it's about here from your body, okay? So 10 centimeters, three and a half inches. That's part of the energetic chakras, but I, I, I need to mention this one now because it's, it's absolutely part of the work we're doing tonight. And I'll, I'll be making us kind of feel into it more and more. That chakra, is very, very interesting. Because as much as your plexus is about you being able to feel energies coming towards you, your clairsentient chakra is about your ability to feel the energies you're sending out and how they will affect others. Allows you to feel how what you're sending out will affect others. Like as soon as there's the word clear in front of it, it means like things that aren't physical. Like, you know, so it's like, example, you're talking shit about someone. When that chakra function is functioning, you will literally be able to feel what that is doing to them. Not hard to imagine why most of the, most people don't want to have that open at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, right? That person doesn't need to be in your field of vision, you know, like that's the 3D world, like you're a piece of shit. And the person's like, 
okay, so you, you see the effect of what you did, you know, like with this level of chakra waking up, you start being able to, it's like a, you're, it's like clear sensitivity, like a, I'm having difficulty with English words. It allows you to really feel the effect of what you're emitting on them, on their thoughts, on their surroundings and how they will be affecting their surroundings based on how these thoughts you're emitting are affecting them. Uh, that's a whole other level of responsibility. Hmm. It's not hard to understand why a lot of us want to shut stuff like that down. You know, it's like, I don't like to the ego. That's yummy food. It's like, oh, he's like this. And he's like that. And then you're just like feeding your pain body. And, you know, like the ego loves it. But once that that awareness starts growing in you, that makes you able to feel the effects way beyond your field of perception of what you are doing when you're doing that. Yeah. As it fine tunes even more, you become able to sense the effects that will have before they even materialize in 3D world. Now that's getting interesting. Because that means you can kind of catch yourself. It's like, oh, wait a minute. What am I emitting right now? And what would the effect of that be? And you can get like the, that intuitive. Uh, you can sense intuitively what that will generate as a reality and then you can choose to go you know what no no i don't that's not what i want to gen that's not what i'm seeking to manifest let me rephrase that let me you know null and void what i just said and kind of like recalibrate myself to a higher level a really interesting example of that is kind of like learning to switch your um negative talk to positive talk you know like instead of like whatever, like it's like an NLP style stuff. It's like, oh, I don't have this to, uh, to I, I am on my way to getting that. You know, like it's, it's like little things like that. So that's more about you and your mind. But so it's like, it, it forces you, as you become aware of that, it forces you to go like, whoa, wait a minute. That's not really, that's not really what I want to do. That's not really what I want to, let me just take a moment to come back to myself. Okay, how do I actually want to formulate this? How could I reformulate this? How can I actually change the way I'm perceiving this person by coming back into my heart and deciding what I'm going to emit towards them? You know? So, for example, oh, that guy's an idiot. He's never going to learn. Well, you, you know, that's, that's the food you're sending him. To... He, he he's uh, he's in his process of learning and you know like maybe parts of our energies don't fit well together there's no judgment in there there's no like so i have a friend it's it's incredible talking with her because she keeps i understand now what she does sometimes when we're talking she'll stop in the middle of a sentence and then she'll just no no right no and then eventually she, she, she reformulates, you know, and it used to like, it used to annoy me. I was like, just fucking say it, you know, like, who cares how you say it? Like, it's just, and it, it's, it's, that's not, she's already on that path of like, I'm, I want to be very responsible for what I'm emitting. What, what am I emitting into the field and how knowing that anything I say about someone will affect them at an energetic subconscious level what is my choice and how I want to, you know, nourish consciousness. So if you start catching yourself, like, oh, wait, not like that. Let me just void and all that out. And let me rephrase that. That's really good. Okay. And that's kind of part of what these celestial, celestial particles are doing as well. Once the plexus purge is well underway, 
Because it's like, you're not going to, you can't feel that outer body, that outer physical body chakra while your plexus is still full of unprocessed emotions. <laughs> So that's what I wanted to mention about this special. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, imagine that, that instead of seeing someone as like, you know, whatever your ego and blah, 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 low frequency thinking is emitting about them. Imagine that you actually take the time to send positive, expansive thoughts towards them. And this is tricky, right? Because it's not about like, Okay, they're, I'm going to send positive thoughts towards them so that they do what I want them to do. You know, like, eh, that's not, <laughs> that, that's, Jack was like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting. Covered what I want to say. So it's like, uh, I, I can't stress enough how much the development of that chakra called the clear sentience chakra in your emotional body between the uh, plexus and the heart. This chakra is part of the gateways to go from 3D to 4D, literally, like, and whenever it communicates information to you about this is what you're emitting and this is how it's gonna, this is how it's affecting them or this is how it will be affecting them. If you don't listen, that chakra closes back. It just shuts back down because you are not willing or ready to leave 3D. Okay, like, so it really has an opening closing function that's 100% related to will you, you know, it's not it's not a dictator, but it's like, will you listen to this information, you know, if you want to learn to be a being that's heart chakra centered, and that is on its journey into, you know, transmuting all this 3D kind of low frequency stuff, so that we can ascend into a higher vibration and higher frequency of living but you're not willing to receive and listen to messages when you receive them from these subtle energies, these subtle energies will just shut down. You go like, all right, guess not, not right now. So let's, let's be part of, let's be part of the momentum and create the energy field of people that do choose to receive that. And especially now, because it's so easy to connect to all the bad stuff. It's really easy to see, you know, the stuff and the control and the this and all these bastards and I don't know what. That ain't going to help. It's not going to help. You know, like, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole, but, you know, some of the energies uh, bringing that these frequencies about, that's exactly what they want. They want you to stay in that place where you're looking at what's wrong and what's bad and what's this and what's that. Because then it's like, yay, if you're doing that, you're not doing this, you know, if it's all about yin, 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 then you're, you're, you're just plexus and you're not purging and you're not learning to go up into the heart chakra. And then that serves their agenda. So it's like, it's not about like, kumbaya. it's not that either. It's not like, let's be like a sleep sheep and, and act like everything's okay. That's not it either. But this is about choosing. What are you going to do about it? You can look at what's wrong and focus on it and amplify it, or you can be aware that there are things that are, you know, whatever, like not ideal. And thank you. This is the problem. And I can't solve that from here. I need to go up. I need to go up to the next level of consciousness in order to find solutions, in order to create and contribute into a new reality. So the reason I'm talking about all this is because that plexus purge is what allows that clairsentient chakra to open and a solar plexus that's not full of undigested emotions 
and a clairsentient chakra that's able to give you information are um they're like that's what allows the life force energy coming from the earth through your body to actually start coming up into your heart and that's what we want like most of us we've got a you know we've got a we've got a barrier here you know like almost all of you have worked with individually and we all kind of have a barrier there it's like the fear that our power is going to be used for bad stuff or whatever so we tend to not let our power go all the way up into our heart and into our, our our higher fields so this is this is how we melt that wall right you purge these old negative emotions and you allow that clear sentient chakra to connect to open up and connect and that allows the the line of energy that allows the opening of the place through which the energy can get embodied more and more in your heart. And that's what we want. We want to embody the frequency of the heart chakra. We want to embody in, in this physical vehicle, the energy of adamantin particles, which have been embodied by Lemurians and haven't been embodied since. So it's kind of cool. For any, for any overachievers here, it's kind of cool. <laughs> Soul overachievers, I like it. Okay, is there anything else I want to say before we go in? Because I can already, whoo, the energy is already coming in. Hmm. Yeah, one last thing I want to say about the our heart chakra as it as it is now the state of the collective heart chakra one of the reasons it vibrates at a lower frequency than like it can vibrate so much higher is because you know our 3D sciences you know have created this view of life in which we are an accident you know we're like we're like this fluke thing that happened in an accidental universe and when we die, we become compost and there's no reason, there's no creator, there's no higher purpose, there's no, and, and, and uh, as Dawkins would say, consciousness is an epiphenomena of matter. So all of a sudden, even consciousness has been <laughs> subjugated to only being what happens when matter complexifies enough that something could emerge such as consciousness. And it's like this whole thing has made us has made it has made it very hard for us to believe and know and feel and communicate with other life forms. Whether it be energetic life forms like devas and and you know the beings that regulate and harmonize nature like that that the shamanic plants work with, you know, whether it be spirit energies and elementals or literally like crystalline beings from other galaxies and dimensions that we can talk to very easily when we're not when we're doing 5d because 5d is out of time and space that that whole belief system created by our 3d sciences is one of the reasons that our heart chakra is so closed off and the heart chakra to expand needs to be able to include many many other life forms than only the physical ones that's a key piece. You know, like our body functioning at the true resonance frequency of the heart chakra is us coming back to being crystalline. It's like the carbon based life form that we are. That's that's the 3D version after the fall in consciousness. And crystalline bodies is our bodies when we are 5D. And when you're back in your 5D crystalline body, you are more than able to be aware of and communicate with any other crystalline beings throughout the galaxies and the worlds and the time frames. So I think that was the last thing I wanted to say. Let's see. Yes. So we're going to do 
a meditation in three parts, but we're gonna we're gonna go in deep. So it's we're going in for at least an hour nonstop. You can lay down if you want, if you're not too worried of falling asleep. The most important energy that allows the heart chakra to open and that allows us to reclaim our crystalline heritage and, and much more expanded consciousness is our ability to feel love for what creates all of life. I'm just going to leave you with that idea as we slowly wind down into a meditation. So do whatever you need to do, a bathroom, glass of water, etc. And uh, we'll start the meditation in a couple of minutes.